Okay, welcome back to another Star Wars Black Series 112 scale action figure review. This time we're looking at an Elite Squad Trooper, and the box in which this came says this is from The Bad Batch. Now, I don't know if that's a Disney Plus TV show or perhaps a, a CGI cartoon series. It doesn't matter to me. Uh, I wanted this figure because it's a Phase 3 clone trooper. Which those are terribly, notoriously difficult to find at a reasonable price in 112 scale as part of the Star Wars Black series. And I suspect that's because uh, scalpers and or army builders snatch all those up. And then they're only available at extortionate prices on the aftermarket. So I was happy to find this one below retail price. And uh, this will actually be two separate reviews, okay? We'll be reviewing the action figure itself. And then I'm going to review the accessory it comes with. So just keep that in mind. So what do I think of this action figure? Well, folks, I think this is a superb work of art. I have no complaints whatsoever with this figure. Again, uh, I believe this is technically known as Katarn armor, molded in dark gray. It's not black, it's dark gray. And you can actually see the uh, black bodysuit uh, and all the joints on the figure there. And I think that's a nice contrast. A nice shiny aesthetic to this armor as well. I dig this uh, paint application here, this dark green uh, visor, and there's some silver and black there on the uh, the helmet as well. Aesthetically, I think this looks really, really sweet. Now, uh, the belt he's wearing is a slightly different shade of gray than the armor itself, but I still think that looks pretty good. Okay, now what about articulation and posability? Well, you saw that he was standing up on his own. Uh, nice tight joints on this figure. I'm not going to mess with these ankles too much because I'm on to a good thing. And uh, uh, I, I don't want to loosen these up to make it where I have to peg him into a, a, a action force stand to keep him from falling over all the time. Um, excellent ranges of motion on this figure, especially at the, uh, the, the waist here. Nice ab crunch, nice swivel, uh, slight inhibitions as is the case with every stormtrooper and clone trooper figure because of the the, the armor plating on the legs here. Uh, but there is some swivel involved. And uh, dig this. You know, on a lot of these uh, armored troopers, you have some in inhibitions with the armor at the, the shoulder uh, pivot here because of how inflexible the armor might be. This is made out of a very soft, rubbery plastic, which allows you to do this. And it does misshape it quite a bit, but it gives you that range of motion and then it'll flex back to the way it should be. Now, it's a double-edged sword because over time, I have a feeling these will get broken as the, as the years roll by. So be on the lookout of that if you're uh, trying to find one of these loose on the aftermarket. The uh, sh shoulder guards might be broken off on these things in the years to come. So again, absolutely no complaints whatsoever uh, about this action figure. I, th I think it's superb. Okay? Now, I'm going to repeat that. I think this is a terrific action figure. Are you listening, fanboy Hasbros? I love the figure, okay? But now we're going to talk about his blaster rifle, his blaster accessory. Now, one common thread that runs through every single review I've done of Star Wars Black Series action figures, as well as G.I. Joe classified action figures, both produced by the same company, Hasbro, is how terrible the weapons can be. And in the Star Wars Black Series case, it's because they're made out of this soft, rubbery, gummy plastic. And it get, the weapons get bent in the packaging and arrive misshapen with uh, the, you know, the barrels you know, pointing up to 45 degrees uh, left, right, up, or down. And you know, it's, it's, it's not easy to true those and to get them straight again. And you know, we, the consumer, should not have to do that. That's part of quality control. That should happen at the point of manufacture, not, at, not even notwithstanding the point of sale. So that's been my major gripe with all, practically all, Star Wars Black Series action figures. Now, this figure comes with an accessory that's made out of a much more rigid plastic, and I wish this is how they were all made, unless they're still going to find a way to bend those as well at the point of manufacturing. That is precisely what's happened here. Uh, it's bent, folks. Um, gives you a nice close look at this. The uh, barrel is bent about 20 degrees up, and uh, I can't fix that. There's no way for me to fix that. Uh, I can heat it up and, and try to flex it down. Uh, it's probably going to break or just melt the plastic if I get it hot enough to where I can finally move it. So, you know, that's never going to look correct. This 
should have never left the factory in this stage. I don't know if this is an isolated, an isolated incident uh, limited to my specimen of this figure or if this was the full result of the full production run. I don't know. But uh, this is amateur hour right here. Um, again, someone in quality assurance and quality control not uh, living up to standards here, at least not my standards. When I purchase uh, an action figure, I expect the guns to not be bent. And uh, I think that's a pretty reasonable expectation. Wouldn't you agree? It's, frankly, it's to the point now where I kind of wish Hasbro would stop producing weapons and accessories for these figures altogether uh, since they can't get it right. Uh, they, sometimes they knock it out of the park with the figures themselves, for example, this one, and then they, uh, they, they strike out on the accessories. It's like two completely different departments are, are combining efforts and... and one department is doing a much, much, much better job than the other. At least that's what it feels like to me. And I'm certainly not the only one that feels this way. There is a burgeoning industry of basement builders with 3D printers who are uh, reproducing these in better quality plastics and selling them on eBay at a premium price. And people are buying them to replace the crappy weapons that are coming with these Hasbro toys. Now, I could get on eBay right now and buy a replacement a clone trooper blaster and fix this problem, but it would end up costing me more than I paid uh, for the action figure with tax and shipping. So I'm simply not willing to do that. So what am I going to do? Well, um, tentatively, you know, for the moment, I'm just going to give this figure this uh, this G.I. Joe classified weapon. This is one of the better ones. This is one that came with the um, uh, Snake Eyes Origins Baroness uh, figure. And as you can see, this, even this is bent, the, the, the muzzle on it's bent because it's, you know, removable there. And it's just not true there at the... Uh, at the at, at the barrel, so you know, more work to try to get this straight. Uh, I'm not asking for too much here, pal. Uh, some of these Star Wars figures actually have uh, nice accessories. For example, the Phase One Clone Trooper with plastic weapons made out of this same material. Uh, that blaster wasn't bent like this, nor was the long rifle. So they can do it. It's just not a question of whether they can. It's a question of whether they will, and for whatever reason, these days they're choosing not to, to the detriment of their product line, their legacy, and quite possibly their profit margins. Now listen, I know Hasbro is, is currently under fire from all fronts right now as a result of some of their terrible business decisions, and their price increases, and their windowless packaging, and their extortionate HasLab Kickstarters. And I certainly share a lot of those concerns, but pals, this is fundamental quality control right here. And, um, well, clearly no one's doing it. And it's a shame that people have to go out and spend more than they uh, paid for the action figures themselves to correct glaring oversights like this. Heck, an Action Force M9 is going to look better in this figure's hands than the accessory he came with. So uh, that's probably what I'll uh, end up doing. And, you know, maybe this missed me so much because I think the figure itself is so superb. Uh, just to see the, the disparity in quality between the figure and uh, the weapon he comes with. Um, you know, frankly, if Hasbro can't do any better than that, then they should just stop trying to produce the weapon and, and let the fans sort it out because, as the saying goes, the fans are doing the best work. And, you know, I hate to see Hasbro live up to the name Hasblo, uh, but... I also hate bent blasters. So there you go, pals. Like I said, this was going to be two separate reviews. I love this action figure. And um, at, the ha at the same time, I hate to see such incompetence packaged with it. All right. Well, thank you so much for watching, pals. And um, uh, I know I triggered some Hasbros out there. You're just going to have to get over it. You know I'm right. And I'm terribly sorry your standards and expectations have sunk so low. All right. May the force be with you. Talk to you again soon.